This podcast is sponsored by Morning Brew. Use the link in the description below to sign up for their awesome free newsletter on tech, finance, and business news. I always remind people that we're investing, right? Like, yeah, you not know, speculating. We're not on, speculating. Yeah, prices, There's a big difference. Yeah. One of my first uh, dives into finance was like an insurance company where like I didn't sell a single policy and it's right. like at the end of the day, I'm like I'm a terrible salesman. <laughs> and yeah, like you were saying like, you know, you weren't our first choice. It worked yeah. out. Like quantitative tightening, I've, I've talked about it. Like yeah. very important factor. Yeah. We also kind of saw it coming. <laughs> it's actually harder to do this kind of thing as an when actual registered, yeah. licensed yeah. registered professional because you, you there's know, more liability there's and much stuff. more liability. Yeah. If you still have to act within your, you know, your obligation, like you can't give advice. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Plain Bagel Podcast. We're back with another in-person episode, another kind of more personal episode, but more professional this time than uh, our last guest. Well, my last guest, which was my wife. Uh, we have my coworker, Derek. This is Derek Deadman. Uh, not a joke. That's <laughs> your last name. We've talked a lot about the irony <laughs> that we both have uh, morbid last names. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Derek is another portfolio manager at the company I work for, the wealth manager. Uh, and I wanted to have you on, A, to take advantage of having an in-person podcasting studio because there's not a whole lot of <laughs> people, not to say it was slim pickings, but, but just to say that uh, I wanted to, to make use of, of uh, having an in-person uh, interview. And also, um, you actually have a, a really interesting career in finance. And, and I think uh, a lot of viewers would take a lot of interest in uh, hearing from you because, uh, you know, even though I have the YouTube channel and stuff, like I think uh, you, you have a really interesting background because uh, outside of, you know, having a master's, is it behavioral economics? Yeah, or, yeah. Uh, master's, worked for Financial uh, Standards Canada. Yeah, I worked for, yeah, it was... Financial Planning Standards Council That's is it. what they used to be known for. Now it's uh, FP Canada's the right, moniker, right, okay. but yeah. Um, worked there for some time. Yeah. I uh, have worked in wealth management for yeah. over a decade, I believe. Yeah, so. I'm coming up on my 15th year, I think, yeah, in the industry. No yeah. 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 yeah, so uh, so it was a good opportunity. And I think like in the office, we talk a lot about markets and stuff. And I think we're probably the most aligned out of anyone in the office yeah, and yeah. not just because our, our last names match, but because <laughs> we'd make a good funeral home. Uh... Yeah, yeah. Honestly, if, if this stuff doesn't work out, you know, yeah. if this market crash is more persistent dead than dead man and coffin. Yeah. Dead man yeah. coffin. Yeah. yeah. Funeral services. I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. You know, it's, I don't know if you want to remind people of why they're there when, yeah. <laughs> when you're yeah. at a funeral home, but, um, also a uh, winner of the, 40 under 40 award in ottawa yeah. not too long ago yeah. so i don't know if i'm allowed to still say that because i'm not under 40 anymore oh but... there you go <laughs> yeah. Yeah. but i was when I, I was when I, yeah, like, yeah. yeah that's funny i was when i received it but yeah and uh actually funny enough like uh even though should be an honor to be on the plain bagel podcast this isn't actually <laughs> the first time you've done a youtube podcast right. you, you were actually on a on a much bigger channels uh simply neologicals podcast simply yeah. pod logical which yeah. uh if you aren't aware um is a nail art channel and is probably one of Canada's biggest YouTubers, I would think. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, or like certainly up there, like in terms of like top 100, which is, is yeah. I think something. their main channel, I think, I think her main channel, um, like simply nail logical, I think it has like 7 million subscribers. Right. And, uh, and yeah, they have a podcast that they've been doing now for a while and, mm -hmm. um, invited me on to talk about uh finance, finance and, and yeah, stuff and stuff. it was a bit different like you know I, the channel isn't about finance the channel is just about right. anything yeah. the the podcast and so they the first video i was on they got some viewer questions and you know had me on so it was pretty, a lot of fun well finance is like one of those areas where you know like we all have to deal with it so <laughs> even if you don't have like a finance specific channel yeah. I, I think uh you know you're going to have those spheres kind of yeah collide at a certain True. point so yeah. so not even you know not even a, a real honor on being on here but <laughs> but still thought i'd have it's you on very but... special thank you <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, thanks for coming on derek i appreciate it um so I, I figured today uh we would just chat a bit about obviously right now when it comes to markets and stuff there's a lot going on mm -hmm. um and no one can really predict what will happen i i never try to but i think it's a good opportunity to talk about um kind of investor mentality through situations like this because uh as you're well aware and as we're well aware 
uh, that's a huge part of, of managing through yeah. downturns. It's not actually, uh, or, you know, because it's near impossible to predict what things will happen, you know, everyone tries to think, uh, oh, I'll just sector rotate. Right. I'll, I'll figure right. out which plays are going to do well, which are going to do poorly. Investor mentality is probably a, a much bigger part of how you'll actually do yeah, absolutely. through situations like this. So yeah. we'll talk a bit about that. Uh, talk a bit about the finance industry because we also occupy a pretty unique part of the absolutely. industry relative to like people who work. Yeah. Um, and we'll just talk about a bunch of, like, it's really sure. informal, but <laughs> I thought we were here to talk about bagels, but yeah, well, no. <laughs> yeah, this whole time, you're like, Oh, this guy, Richard, has this plain bag, like just really I've been bagels. working, working with Richard for five years. And I thought <laughs> he was just, a... <laughs> yeah, just really his, his pastries and his bakery isn't come here and basically doing your job again. <laughs> yeah, that's right. No, no. Um, so I'll start off, uh, kind of at a high level, uh, like I mentioned, uh, or maybe I didn't mention, but, uh, we both worked as portfolio managers, Derek longer than I have. I've actually just now kind of really pushed into it from being an investment analyst for some time, uh, for viewers who might not be fully familiar with a, what a portfolio manager is, could you kind of explain what that role is and maybe how it would differ from like, you know, in a typical advisor, like if you were to go to a bank, you would get an advisor, right? but how is that different from a portfolio manager? Yeah, I think, especially in our world and being a portfolio managers for um, like private client firms, like portfolio managers dealing with firms, because there are portfolio managers that are, you know, running the mutual funds or running, right. you know, portfolio sure. managers at pension, big pension funds or endowments right. or whatever. But Pretty in our world, any investment product will have a portfolio have manager. Have a portfolio manager, yeah. yeah. So for us, you know, being, you know, portfolio managers, we're working directly with clients. But the, one of the, the biggest difference between us and a, kind of a typical bank advisor, I guess, would be, uh, you know, that we have a fiduciary obligation, mm -hmm. um, obviously, and uh, like an actual legal fiduciary. And really, that comes from the way we're licensed. Um, and I mean, what's interesting, I was actually looking up the statistics and the last number I saw was uh, 3%, I think it's about 3% of advisors in Canada have a legal fiduciary or are registered as portfolio oh, like managers. Only, like, only 3%. 3% oh, wow. of yeah. the advisors in, in Canada are are registered as, okay. um, as fiduciary portfolio managers. So I think the biggest difference is, um, you know, that we're not selling a product, mm -hmm. um, you know, and not necessarily saying that's bad or financial products are bad. Um, you know, but the biggest thing is we're, you know, we're directly managing clients assets and, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, we're paid by our clients to manage their money. We're not paid, you know, to sell a product or to recommend a certain product or we're not paid a commission. So I think that's probably one of the biggest distinguishing factors. And, mm. um, you know, yeah, like it's, it's kind of unfortunate too, because, um, one thing I found and, and I'm sure you kind of had a similar experience, but within the finance industry and for anyone who's like interested in getting to a role where they are a portfolio right. manager or whatever, you kind of have to go through those sales positions. Like you it's do. very rare. Yeah. I'm very lucky. And, and one thing we can, I can kind of talk a bit about, uh, uh, how we got into the company because it's really a rare position. It is. Um, but most of the positions are, are sales roles yeah. and, and it's kind of a problem with the finance industry in my opinion. Like it makes sense on the one hand, because that's, you know, when you have banks that have these products, like that's yeah. how they make money is they're, you know, they get the sales force, yeah. but then you end up with these conflicts of interests and these problems where, you know, there have been, especially in Canada, I'm not sure how it would differ in the U.S. I'm sure they have similar They, I think it problems, does. I mean, there's but... different kind of, you know, they have the advisors and they have, I think, what's like RIAs or registered right. investment advisors, yeah. which so are, I think, more, term, I think yeah. are more similar to, to us as portfolio managers that have right. a fiduciary obligation and, you know, have to, you know, can't have conflict, so can't take commissions, that kind of right. thing. Yeah. Um, but you're right. I mean, I think, I think the kind of, I don't want to say traditional model or the advisor or bank kind of channel. It's more about, you know, advice as a means to sell a product, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and not to say that, you know, do not want to just because I, you know, I started my career in the bank mm -hmm. um, and it was a great place to learn, great place to, you know, um, you know, really develop my career. But at the same time, I knew as I, as I kind of learned and understood the industry a bit more that, that's not where I wanted to end up. I wanted to kind of the independence and right, yeah. I wanted to, to be able to 
you know, really be driven by kind of my advice and, and all that, not by kind of the products I need to sell to, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, that's it. And, and I think one of my first, uh, dives into finance was like an insurance company right. where like I didn't sell a single policy. And it's right. like, at the end of the day, I'm like, I'm a terrible salesman. Like, <laughs> yeah. like in the sense of like, you know, uh, I, I run a channel, so I guess I have like some marketing right. experience, but like when it comes to sales, like I just, I, I don't care enough to, <laughs> you know, to, to convince someone right. when, you know, they don't want something. And that, I think that, yeah. finance is a lot of that, right. As it well, is, like, yeah. you know, like, uh, well, why not open a credit card or, yeah, yeah, <laughs> or whatever yeah. have you? And I always wanted a position where uh, I felt genuinely like it was just helping people. Like, right. Yeah. And I think, I mean, I think especially early on in your career, if you are starting in that kind of insurance role or even some of those kind of major, more commission based mm -hmm. roles, you know, if you're not selling, you're not eating. Right. Well, that's <laughs> so, it, right. So it, if it's the incentives between there, incentives yeah. there, whereas, you know, once you're, once you're more established, I think, yeah. you know, maybe that it's, but you're right. Like we are in a very fortunate position where, yeah. you know, and, and we're only really here because like it's, so we work for a boutique, right. Investment manager, yeah. which is basically just a small company. Yeah. So unless you're able to find a company like that, or you're really such a good, right. You know, yeah. manager that, that you work your way up to managing a pension or right. whatever. It's really like, it is slim pickings for finding a position like that. And, um, like you've talked a lot to students. I, I've, I yeah. used to go to, yeah. to my university and talk a lot to students once I was in the field and like so many people just want to do a similar position to what they we do, do where, yeah. where, you know, well, I don't want to be a salesman. I just want to manage investments because I love investments but there's just no positions. There. It's tough, like, especially it's, it's really starting tough. out. It is. And like, I even remember when I was in school, um, you know, or like you said, I've talked to, you know, I go to university of Ottawa, Telfer finance club. I've talked at Algonquin here and in, right. in, in Ottawa. And I think, I think it's tough because you know, the students are coming out and they're all, they want, you know, it's the same thing. They want to, they want to work with investments, but they want to help people and they, this. And so then they might have some of the employers that come out and see kind of some of the jobs that come out and they're kind of maybe a bit, okay, this is starting out to be way more of a sales role than it is uh, right. helping people be financially deal with their finances. Yeah, deal yeah. With their finances. Yeah. And so, yeah, it, it is a bit of a broken industry still that way. And, and, and you, I mean, you said it too, um, so if that's the way it is for new grads coming out or people kind of wanting to get an industry, well, that's also the way it is for the clients. A lot of clients or a lot of people mm -hmm. who don't understand, or that's, you know, new, you know, you know, like I, I know, you know, you've talked about this channel. And one of the reasons you started this channel was a lot of your friends kind of asking money questions and this mm -hmm. and wanting to help people. And so imagine those people going into the bank or going and trying to find somebody to help them do with their first investing. And, you know, yeah. you could have a bad experience with, and with, the part of the the regulatory side too is there's just like no distinction between because of that all-encompassing advisor title yeah, which yeah. Uh, if you aren't familiar doesn't I, I don't want to say it doesn't mean a whole lot because you do for some roles you have to be yeah. registered to and even in the u.s you have to be registered yeah. to to be an advisor yeah but the level of registration is very different like some people yeah. who are advisors um are basically only licensed to sell one of like two to five products yeah at mutual times. funds maybe or you know yeah you're if you're here in canada and you're just your mfda licensed you're licensed to sell mutual funds or iroc then might you make you know individual securities or etfs or whatever but it's uh yeah it's which different. again nothing wrong with that no, but it's the fact no, that that's yeah. not explained it's right not explained, it's, it's never it. brought yeah. up that yeah. you know this is how this advisor yeah. is different from yeah. this advisor yeah. and i i think i do i think we need all kind of levels of service right mm -hmm. but again like just like the fee discussion because not everybody can necessarily not every it doesn't you know economies of scale doesn't make sense or it's not feasible that everybody can deal with a, mm -hmm. a, a have somebody personally managing or building portfolios for them it's just not feasible mm -hmm. when you're just starting out so to have other options you know robo advisors or you yeah. know and maybe you can deal with somebody great at a bank that's not necessarily saying there isn't options but right as long as you know you know, the qualifications of the person that you're dealing yeah, with, yeah. as long as you, you know, know how they get paid, how mm -hmm. much you're paying to get the advice and service you're getting, then I think that's, yeah. that's fair, but you're right. It's just, it's, it's such an opaque industry yeah, that way sometimes. And, and, you know, yeah. a lot of commenters and, and viewers, uh, well, even like in the YouTube finance space, yeah. like doing it yourself is such a popular approach yeah, in the yeah. YouTube space. Yeah. And it's easy to see why, because it's, like uh, yeah, there's I, just so little faith right I, so and I totally get it it's it's something that 
uh, on the one hand, you know, options like robo advisors, like, you know, don't give financial advice, but you know, they've done a really good job of yeah. like making stuff more introductory and like, like I agree. we've, yeah, you, I know you've like just said to clients, like, just go get a robo advisor yeah. at times. <laughs> like, sometimes like, it's, yeah, it's like, you know, and I'll, I'll sometimes sit down and, and with clients and that just, that makes sense for them. Yeah. Like that, if that's really what they're looking for, they don't want the advice that comes along. Maybe if all you need is, is a yeah. advisor or somebody, you can kind of commoditize the investment side of things and, yeah. and why not do it for cheap? And so, yeah, I mean, and, and, uh, all that to say, you know, I, I think for viewers who are interested in entering the finance space, um, it is tough. Yeah. Uh, one kind of, it's like my own story for joining the company, which is, I, I like to share, I, I think sometimes, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's, it might, I don't want it to come across as like me down talking the, the people who hired me, but, um, basically <laughs> I was told I didn't get the job <laughs> was what it was. And, and, uh, but the, I was basically a second pick and, and, um, I, I was told I met up and, and was told over lunch, like, uh, well, you know, just, just stay at it for a couple of years and, and we'll, uh, we'll keep in touch though, because, right. you know, uh, we like kind of your resume and all that. And at the time, I think one of the big selling points was I had a lot of operational right. experience, yeah. uh, but needed a lot of mentoring on the, on the research side right, at right. the time, because I hadn't had a whole lot of experience researching stocks. And I did come with like a, a research report. And if you're, and if you're someone who's interested in working in finance, uh, because it's so tough, you do have to work a bit harder. Right. And I think one of the best things you can do, even if you don't have a whole lot of experience is writing research, research reports. reports yeah and i'll actually share a link down below because my university that i went to used to have an investment group that right. published their That's reports cool. yeah. so you can always look at that as a template that will really separate you in my opinion I think is, so. is if you have a, a report that um shows you like hey i didn't just put together a resume i also yeah i really like what i do or i really want to work this kind of role yeah. um so I took some, some of my own time yeah, to, to yeah. put some research It shows together. a bit of, I think, initiative and passion. Right, and, exactly, and just yeah. Kind of sets even if part. it's bad, like even yeah. if they throw it in the garbage, like I think that's a, a helpful thing. Because I think you thing. recognize, and I mean, our firm's great. I think like, you know, you even said like, you know, so we have, you know, our, so I'm a partner now at the firm and, and two other partners, two of the founding partners. And, and then, you know, Richard's the fourth portfolio manager and, you know, we have very similar approaches and styles. Like, mm -hmm. you know, we taught all the time and I think we, you know, our philosophy and kind of style lines up, um, you know, and the two founding partners, not far off from us, mm -hmm. but a little bit different, little right? A little yeah. different, right? And, you know, we've taken, uh, and I know, cause I kind of, you know, was a bit ahead of Richard when I came into the firm and, you know, I learned everything I could from not, well, not everything. I still am learning from, from our partners. We, you know, always learning every day in this business, right? It's so dynamic, but, mm -hmm. um, you know, taking kind of what I'm learning there and what I've learned from my other roles and, and stuff and, and come, but it's, um, you know, I, well, I, I like, uh, so I, was I in, in your interview? I don't think I was right. You were in like the follow up I think, one. I, I think, think I was in the follow up yeah. one. Yeah. yeah. But, um, you might've been there when I presented my JP Morgan. I think I was actually. Yeah. 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 Cause we had, yeah. we had like, um, yeah, we had, I think, 20 applicants that we had screened through. I, we had quite a few interviews. And yeah, like you were saying, like, you know, you weren't our first choice. <laughs> it worked yeah. out. Yeah. Um, but, but so I, I didn't, so I think the guy who got the job, like he turned it down. He turned it down. Because yeah. of some yeah. family related things or. He had got another opportunity at like, oh, where okay. he was. He, at the very same time, he kind of got offered a, a, um, a promotion where he was in a right. different role. and. Um, probably an easier transition. Yeah. I think, yeah, he just, it was, I think a tough decision. I actually still keep, I keep in touch with him. Oh, no he's a good oh, guy. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. He was a really nice guy and he's, you know, he's just in case well. I ever step out of line or That's something. Right. Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I think though, what, what's interesting too, though, what, what if you're talking to, you know, if anybody's kind of thinking, well, should I apply? Should I not like getting in? Um, you know, I don't know if you remember, but like the job posting, technically you weren't really, oh, no. you weren't qualified for <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, no, like, I definitely wasn't. If yeah. you remember, you know, we were looking for somebody who already had their CFA yeah. or was at least, I think at level two. And I think yeah, you had done, I might've been writing. I think my you were writing your level. You, I don't know if you had, yeah, I don't think you'd written it. And we were looking for somebody with like kind of already with three to five years of kind of like direct research yeah. experience. Mm -hmm. You know, you didn't have the experience, but you came in at the same time and kind of wowed everybody with your communication skills. And just like you said, like you didn't have all this industry experience, but like, you know, you were 
uh, you know, you had still good, relevant experience, but mm -hmm. I get a lot of those kind of like, what kind of skills, like what are important? Like if you were hiring, what are you looking for? And that's what I would say. I mean, you need to, you need to be smart. You need to have the technical abilities. So, you know, for us, the CFA mm -hmm. is the, the CFA, like it's just such good curriculum. Yeah. You can go buy someone's secondhand textbooks yeah. if you want to research yourself yeah. and just see what like it takes yeah. to like get like, to that it's level. It's the gold but, standard and it's, yeah. you know, it's globally recognized. And, and so for us, I mean, that was a firm decision. They were in, in Canada for like licensing purposes, there are other, to be a portfolio manager, you either there need your, there's yeah. like, you need your CFA or you need, uh, you know, I think it's like the CIM designation, which, right, you know, yeah, people yeah. call it kind of the baby CFA. Um, right. Not that it's not still challenging everything, but it's not, you know, not the to CFA's the same. on a different level. Yeah, it's, it's CFA is <laughs> on a completely different yeah. level. Um, and I don't say, that, I don't say that with pride either. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, <just to laughs> well, be clear, it's, man, it's a lot brutal. of blood, sweat and tears <laughs> yeah. to get through it. Right. So, yeah. um, but, you know, and so for us as a firm, it's like, you know, that's kind of our, you know, minimum entry. That's yeah. what we yeah, want yeah. the gold standard. So, but, so you need the technical skills. Absolutely. But if we hire somebody who's got all like just noodles mm -hmm. and noodles of technical skills, but doesn't have the kind of personal skills, like communication is a big thing. I always talk about, um, the ability to kind of communicate effectively and cause really it end, in the end, it's a trust business, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I think, uh, I do think the Excel helped a little bit too. Yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> yeah. You undersold your Excel skills. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I actually made a video on why I love Excel oh, really? and, and yeah. part of it is it helped me get my job. Like oh, I nice. basically said like, Oh, like I know how to do macros, like yeah, the, the programming yeah. side of it. And I, some people didn't care, but, yeah. <laughs> but some people <laughs> impressed a bit more to be like, Oh, like you can make a model that yeah. like, and I, I know when I first got on the job, I started like making tools left, right and center. Like, Oh, yeah. like I can do this now. And, and a lot of them like, you know, fell on deaf ears and rightfully so like, you know, kind of unnecessary. I was, but, yeah. I was the same way when I started too. Was for sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just ambitious to like, you know, oh, yeah. revolutionize how yeah. we did things. Yeah, but, for sure. Um, Oh, we talked a lot about that, but there, like it's a good topic. <laughs> like, that? Like, and a lot of viewers like are, are interested yeah. in, in well, yeah, I, yeah, being I don't know finance. Like, yeah, you know, whether it be entering the field or, or even just managing their own finances, right. like learning yeah. a bit more about that. Um, Can you imagine getting your CFA just to manage your own money? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's not what I was suggesting. To be clear, like like that, there's no point. And I don't think you can't like you need work, like to actually well, get to the actually, yeah, yeah, not to write the exams, but, but that's true to get it. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's it was tough. Like I'm glad I did that before I had a kid because I don't think I could do it. See, like, I wish I would have done it before kids because my first daughter was a year old when I started. Oh, no kidding. When I did level wow, one, my daughter that. was a year old. When I did level three, my right. my second daughter was was uh, just born. Level wow, three. no yeah. kidding. Good yeah. for you. Yeah. yeah, jeez. No, I uh, I'm yeah got that out of the way as <laughs> soon as I could. <laughs> yeah. Hey everyone, just a quick pause to thank the sponsor of today's podcast episode, Morning Brew. If you're someone who's looking to keep a pulse on the economy and stay current on the news, the Morning Brew is an excellent newsletter that sends out content seven days a week, summarizing tech finance, and business news. They're a quick five minute read that's not only interesting, but also entertaining, with the writing being witty and enjoyable to read. It's a great way to stay up to date on the daily happenings. For example, they recently dove into how countries in Europe, despite aggressive climate change objectives, have started to fire up coal power plants given the current natural gas shortage, showing the difficult trade-off that many nations are now facing as winter fast approaches. It's great coverage like this that leads me to read Morning Brew every day, and I highly recommend you check it out if you're interested in learning more about the markets, or just, like I mentioned, keeping a pulse on things. You can sign up in just a few seconds using the link in the description below, and yeah, they're a great free service. So, thanks again to Morning Brew, and now, back to the episode. So obviously, uh, one of the probably more pressing things that people want to talk about is, is uh, the markets being down. Right. Uh, yeah. I've put out a couple of videos now talking about... Um, the downturn explaining some of the factors behind it uh obviously you know rising interest rates are a very visible one uh mm -hmm. for people who aren't aware as rates rise uh it not only makes debt more expensive which you know alone would would add a pressure right. to the economy um also on the investor side it, it also tends to draw money out of certain areas right. because uh all of a sudden you have fixed income investments are paying more and right for just not parking your money because there is still right. risk yeah. but it's less yeah. risk than these areas um, and, and that's just one factor. Yeah. There's China, there's the war, there's a whole lot going on. But, um, one thing I was going to ask, well, first of all, uh, have you had a lot of conversations about the downturn? Like, are you, is that like a, a thing? A lot of clients are concerned because it's kind of the first ever since the 2020 dip we've had. Right. If you exclude that small thing, which didn't last very long. Right it's like been the first downturn we've seen since yeah, yeah. kind of 2008. Like, yeah, that's true. Really. Like for kind of 
that seems to be staying. I mean, 2020 was a t- little bit tough and right. just because it was such a anomaly, it seemed like it right. was just so sudden and... And no one had an idea. Yeah, of like, I mean, right. Who's like, you know, who's thinking that, uh, you know, we're going to have this global pandemic, right? And so, um, but yeah, no, it's, it's, you know, I'm pretty fortunate that, that my clients and, you know, are in our a little bit more, I think, sophisticated or mm-hmm. experienced investors, we are dealing with kind of more on the higher net worth side. And I think a lot of them have, have kind of been here before. And, um, and I also really try to be proactive with it too. Yeah. I mean, um, you know, I mean, I, I, I was when one of your first videos that you did, like, I can't remember even what it was like about a month ago when kind of, we first had that a little bit more significant of a drop in the market right, yeah. and you did a quicker video. And I said, um, I actually, you know, I sent a note out to all my clients just kind of saying this is what's going on. I'm here if you need me. Right. Um, you know, here's a link to a video just kind of right. explaining what's going on <laughs> yeah. too with my colleague Richard and, um, you know, and, and for the most part I get tons of emails or calls back from clients being like, yeah, I'm, I'm okay. You know, been here right. before, you know, and that's good. Yeah. Cause that's, yeah. and that's, I would say that probably comes from a place of above average understanding of, of I think the so. I and think. just, and trust too. And I always really try to commute. I think, um, one of the taglines I use with clients sometimes or whatever, like philosophies, whatever you're going to call it, like, um, you know, I always say, cause you know, we t- you can't predict the market. Right, it's yeah, like, yeah. nobody knows what's yeah, yeah. <laughs> as smart <laughs> no, as we mind. think we are. Like yeah. nobody knows what's yeah. going to happen. We all, we have our thesis and we, you know, we have ideas and we try to, but you know, something I've always kind of talked about with clients. And one of the things I like to say is like, you can't predict, but you can prepare. Right. right and I think, yeah, yeah. you know, part of preparation is just, you know, building a diversified portfolio, like kind of the real basics of investment. Yeah, yeah. And there's stuff we do, um, you know, a little bit tactically to be prepared. And so I talk a lot about this stuff with clients when times are good mm-hmm. so that when this happens, you know, they kind of know, right. you know, and yeah. they know what I've done and how their portfolio is structured in a way that, you know, it's going to weather this just fine. And one of the biggest things is, um, you know, clients, you have clients that are in accumulation stage mm-hmm. and then you have clients that are in the more deaccumulation stage, you know, clients who are already retired, who drawing a monthly income from their portfolio these types of times can tend to worry them a bit more right I think, right yeah. and naturally because you know they have yeah they're 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 actively drawing right yeah. whereas if you're actively putting in well then you might say hey well this is good that the money i'm putting in is going to be buying yeah. you know cheaper yeah, stocks and, that, and stuff that, that's a good point because uh you know people they dollar cost averaging is obviously a very popular yeah, yeah. approach um and whether you implement it direct like very sternly in the sense of like you right. know you're only investing every six months or whatever or just gradually because you're at an early stage right. of your life and you just don't have as much money as you will in the future right, like right. that's one benefit is yeah. is if you're early on the risk obviously is a lot higher right when you're later yeah. on in your career and you're yeah. you depend on that money yeah. um but that's one thing too is i think especially like in the youtube space um like tech stocks were always like the last two years, it was all right. about tech and, and all yeah. that stuff. And one thing uh, is like, that's the area that's being hardest hit yeah, right now. And right. Yeah. So yeah. If, if you are more diversified and people argue about how diversified you should be, well, you shouldn't all be in tech. It's right. kind of <laughs> like the, the <laughs> sum, summation of it, but right. at the very minimum, yeah. um, you know, obviously not just one or two stocks. Right. Uh, like there's, there's ranges within diversification you can argue, but it's kind of hard to argue you like to go all in in right. one area yeah. or one stock. Um, and this is why, like right. it's, it's times like this where, uh, the people who were diversified, you know, who didn't go all in on tech right. and stuff are holding up a heck of a lot better. Right. Um, and even areas like, like energy, which for a long, and you know, you could argue about whether you should have been in energy right, the past right. 10 years or not, but, um, energy is like a huge outperformer right now. Right. Yeah. And in, in fact is up while yeah. the rest of the market yeah. is down. Yeah. So that's kind of one benefit of, of, you know, stretching past just that right. area which I, I think especially with youtube outside the fact that obviously they're high flying names and right. tends to be yeah. the case is that's yeah. what draws clicks yeah. and stuff but yeah. we don't really sector rotate like in the sense of we we never pull money fully right. out of an area or yeah. put fully into an area right. outside of like you know if we think an area is riddled with debt and stuff yeah. then yeah but it's more about the individual companies and right one benefit of a downturn is i kind of alluded to it uh, well, not benefit of a downturn, but one benefit of this approach is, uh, like, I think debt management is kind of one of the biggest things to look out for right. when you have downturns like yeah. this, right? Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm sure you've talked to clients a lot about that, but 
when you have a downturn, like so long as you know your companies are going to survive. Right. Well, that, that's it in the end. Yeah, that's exactly that's, it. And yeah. I'd say too, that's kind of the also benefit we have um, in our approach and that we are building portfolios of individual companies. You know, we don't own, uh, you know, it's, it's different if your client opens a statement and it's like, I've got X ETF or X mutual fund or X whatever, and they don't really see what's underneath the hood. So all they see is that, well, it's down 10% mm -hmm. or 12%, you know, um, whereas if, you know, they open their statement and they see, you know, I don't know if I can name whatever companies, you know, like <laughs> yeah. X bank or yeah, X yeah, yeah, yeah. rail or whatever. Yeah. And then if you do have that conversation with them and they're like, Oh, I'm getting a bit nervous here. Or wow. The market said you can remind them and say, well, okay. The market's down 12% or mm -hmm. down 20%, but is this company really worth less 12, 20% less than it was? You know, like you, they understand it's like, as long as they're financially sound, they've managed their debt, they're still earning it, you know, mm -hmm. um, there's still value there. Like, you know, then it's, then it kind of can ease the mind to think a bit like, yeah. okay, well maybe they remember. And I think the biggest thing I, you know, to me, I always remind people that we're investing, right? Like, yeah, you know, not speculating. We're not on, speculating. Yeah, prices, there's a big difference, yeah. right? And not to talk necessarily bad about, that side of the thing, but there's a huge difference between, that's my theory or my approach anyway. Yeah, and what I've yeah, learned in my sure. career is there's a really big difference between investing and speculating and just reminding clients what we're doing and investing and yeah, it tends to work. Yeah. And I think, um, like you kind of see the, the difference pretty explicitly when you have right. a downturn like this, right? Because for a speculator, this is probably the worst case scenario. Yeah. It's quite literally when markets are dropping, right. unless yeah. you're shorting too, right. but well, I think, most people don't do that. Because the thing but. is, is you're buying it, if you're buying something just purely because you think it's going to keep going up, like mm -hmm. you may not, you may have a thesis or a reason why, but really it's, you're not owning it because you want to own that specific company. Mm -hmm. You just think it's the next hot thing or you think it's going to keep going up and you're just, you know, what do you do when it goes down? Like, right. what, you yeah, know, yeah. like you, you really have nothing to fall back on maybe. I don't yeah. know. It's, it's going to be tough, but. One thing I find, um. I don't know who at the company would have like kind of taught this to me, if you will. But uh, one thing I, I find helpful when, when times are down, because, you know, like we said, like a big part of it and right. you would, well, you would be able to speak more to the psychological impact right, of, yeah. of market fluctuations and stuff on your investing. But, um, one thing is, you know, obviously if you look at a position and it's down for a day and right. that can be very stressful and, and it can make you question, well, what was I wrong? Right. And, and maybe you were, you yeah. know, cause that's yeah. always the case. Yeah. And even though you can argue about the specifics over time, markets are generally efficient, like right. maybe not. And you know, we had game so that's, yeah, a, yeah. that's a question, <laughs> yeah. but, uh, but you know, so there's a chance that you are wrong. But one thing that really stuck with me over time was the idea of thinking like, has my thesis changed? Like right. what has that's fundamentally it. changed yeah. to cause this downturn? Yeah. yeah. Um, and it, it could be the case that even if your company hasn't changed, that that still matters because, you know, if the Fed is hiking right, rates, yeah. if you have a debt laden company right. that was able to afford debt, but now right. can't, yeah. that matters. Yeah. Uh, but if there's nothing like that, if a company has always been able to manage debt, right. you know, they're long, they still have a good business yeah. Yeah. and, you know, long-term you expect them to do well, even through ups right. and downs, then, uh, it's not a reason to panic even when you see right. that value go down because yeah. I think that's probably the hardest part of being a, an investor, yeah. right? Is when yeah. things don't go as expected and it's true. It's easy over the past two years when things are up, right? Yeah. <laughs> a yeah. lot harder when things are down. I don't know about you, but sometimes I actually find that it's a bit tougher to do what we do when everything's going up. Yeah. Because yeah. I would, yeah, I, because it's like that. if it's, if everything's going up, it just feels like, well, you just throw a dart at a yeah. dartboard and pick and you're going to, that's kind of what it was. The, it's kind of what it was. You know, right. And, uh, and that's online the thing. and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Right. And so it's kind of like, well, and I find that, you know, people tend to, and this every, we all do, I think sometimes have a short memory, some, you know, and, and, um, you kind of forget sometimes I think can forget some of the, the rules you learn and the long, right. like the long term, And, and, uh, so I find that cause sometimes, you know, you, if you have a, an approach and a thesis and it's about being diversified and about not being, and then, you know, sometimes then you might have questions from clients. Well, why am I not, you know, like Tesla's up, whatever, why am I not there? What, mm -hmm. you know, and you're like, well, that's just not part of our approach. And yeah. well, I'm missing out. They feel like they're missing out. Well, you know, and, uh, because, you know, so I don't know, I find that can sometimes be a bit of yeah. a, more of a challenge and because then it's more, I think more kind of 
I don't know, I always call our approach a bit vanilla. And yeah, and like, I, I actually think investing should be boring yeah. in a way and um, and pretty straightforward and there's really no um, nothing miraculous about what we do. And, and yeah. so I think that it's times like now actually, and I find, and I get that sometimes with clients who they'll like open their statement and they'll be like, oh, wow, I thought it was going to be way worse. And, right, yeah. you know, that's more validating than it is when, if they open their stuff, well, I thought it was going to be way better, you know, yeah, in the markets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, makes... that's in like something is just so many people online. Like, uh, when you have these like portfolios that are all tech and stuff, right. like just the losses right now are just nuts. Like, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's, it's like 60% down plus yeah, yeah. like it, it's, it's crazy. And it's just because like, again, it's like, and I, I actually, I'm not like a huge advocate of like holding, um, like, there are some sectors I'm happy to, to right. avoid because yeah. it, whether it be outside my circle of competence or, or whatever. That's it. I mean, if you don't understand it, don't yeah, you don't it, need right? to, like, but also to. like, it's okay to try and expand. Your, yeah, your yeah, it's true too. Yeah. Yeah. One area, Absolutely, right? yeah. Or one stock or whatever. Yeah, but, yeah. um, yeah. What, and, uh, the funny thing too, is uh, there's a term for it. Maybe, I don't know. I don't think it's overconfidence bias. That is one. But there's this thing where, you know, over the past two years, things were rallying. Right. A lot of people take credit and, and internalize yeah, yeah. the fact that, oh, well, I knew what stocks were going to do well. And well, that's like it. That. Right. You, it's basically when you, you take credit for the good times, that's, you're, the... you, you're under control when it's good. It's all your, you know, it's your fault when everything goes well, but it's, everything's out of your control when yeah. it goes down. Well, there's nothing like, and it, you see that in the markets and you'll yeah. see it with kind of the hot stocks or the hot sectors like you see that with, you see that with the finance i keep talking about i don't know if you're, you're probably not on finance youtube are you? uh, <laughs> no, no i see some of it a little bit yeah so, a little bit like and right now it's like uh there have been people who have gone as far with cryptocurrencies to blame like to say that the federal reserve has gone as far yeah, as to assassinate yeah. their project like yeah. intentionally going out to like no we don't want uh dog two coin to mm -hmm. <laughs> to do well we're gonna we're gonna yeah. take it out like there have been literal accusations yeah. like this is entirely the government yeah and like the government plays an important role like right. i'm not going to dismiss that like quantitative tightening I've, I've talked about it like yeah very important factor yeah we also kind of saw it coming yeah <laughs> like, I, I don't know what what people expected like so i think it's like you're not doing yourself any favors by externalizing that right. to an extreme where you yeah. say, well, like I would have kept doing well, but the government stepped in and all this stuff. And, and you know, that's fair to an extent, but like, I mean, you know, rising rates yeah. were going to come at some yeah. point. Quantitative t tightening, like QE yeah. was never intended to be permanent. No. So like you, there is some responsibility there. And, yeah. and I, I don't think anybody should be, should be surprised that there's inflation right now. Yeah. Like, I mean, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. you know, exactly. and, I mean, after a decade of like, after a decade, but that's it, right. Is, that's is you thing, have such right? a long it, period. It did. Yeah. People think it's a new yeah. normal or, or whatever. And like, I say that, like, I, like, I, I know I've been <laughs> in the industry for like through this period. Like, you know, yeah. I wasn't a pre 2008. Like, I think I was in like, geez, high school, high school, maybe even elementary school through 2008. So like, yeah, see, I, 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 I was, understand. I was in my first year, <laughs> couple years as, as an advisor in right. 2008. So I was just so pretty yeah, fresh. So I learned, yeah, 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 yeah. And it was interesting too, because, um, you know, I started, like I said, kind of more in the retail channel. And when I would, I took over for a kind of a book of clients at a bank. And, and what was interesting was a lot of the clients still had their, um, whatever i won't say what, in, what what institution i was with but they had this this institutions like science and tech fund which was really just like a nasdaq fund and right a lot of them still held this and this was from like the 2000 like this was from like the tech wreck oh, a wow. lot of them yeah, had yeah. bought this you know had got this or been sold this or whatever like in 99 2000 and then went up they bought it high and then it crashed and a lot of people were still kind of holding it and so i was like a lot of people were still kind of recovering from that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then all of a sudden, you know, then this big financial crisis comes yeah. and, you know, that was a, a scary time. I was pretty new and, uh, but you know, I lived through that and, mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I'll, you learn I'll, a lot of lessons there. Yeah. And, and all to say that that's a lot of people ask me like, Oh, well, like, why don't you just do YouTube full time? One of the nice things is, uh, you know, I work with people who have been yeah. investing for quite, yeah. quite a while. You've, you've been in the field longer than myself and, you know, the founders have been there since yeah. lived through the 2000, the 2000 yeah. dot com bubble and, yeah. and worked in the industry during that time. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot to learn there. And, there is. Yeah. um, you know, that's kind of a, a tough thing for newer investors, especially over the last two years where yeah. you had this hyped up market, whether it be cryptocurrencies or stocks, 
where it just attracted so many new yeah. people who have never experienced something like this. And, and like I said, I, I know I'm, I'm not <laughs> like a sage here, but that's one thing I like about my job is, is I, right. we, we've been able to talk about that kind of stuff. And I've learned yeah. a lot from that, from, you know, being around. Yeah. People I mean, it's, it's, experience. you can't judge somebody who your whole life, you've only seen something go yeah. up. So well, you're just like, well, yeah. it only goes up, you know, but yeah. that's, yeah. you know, it doesn't take long to look in recent history. Well, no, it's not true. Yeah. Okay, you know, everything's cyclical, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, all, you know, <laughs> supply demand, it's pretty straightforward yeah. when it comes and And I think that's the tough thing is, is, you know, and this is all assuming you want to be an active investor. I think like both you and I are pretty like, oh, like if you want to be passive, that's great. Like yeah. passive's great for a lot of people. And oh, absolutely. I've, I think it, I think it can work. I think like there's so many different ways to, because it, to me, the most important thing for any investor should be like the objective. Like, what are you trying to achieve? So yeah. if you choose to achieve that by trying to invest actively, great. If for, if you're, if you want to do it passively, great. I still mm -hmm. think you need to be active with your investments, meaning like you need to know be why aware. you're doing it, yeah, be yeah. aware of it, but you can have like active investment goals. Like I want to retire. I want to do this. Like you'd be active that way and achieve it with a passive, yeah. you know, ETF or mm -hmm. a robo. Like that's great. I think that can work. I think that can work. Yeah. And, uh, and I'll have that. Yeah. I mean, you mentioned it early on. Like I'll have that conversation. Yeah. Like if I, maybe a new prospect, new client and chatting with them, like, you know, I don't think you need me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You well, know? <laughs> and I think like the thing with passive too, is like just how affordable it is. Like right. we were talking yeah. earlier about like how expensive it is to try and hire someone like obviously for someone starting off, like passive is a, is a great option it because is, yeah. it's so cheap. Right. Yeah. So for someone who doesn't have that capital to afford those high fees, yeah. Yeah. um, it's awesome on that front. And it's not to yeah. say that even if you're a bigger client, like, you know, passive might still work right. for you. Yeah. Uh, w one thing with us is like, because we do deal with larger clients, like you have other questions that come up and other, like yeah. there's cross border stuff that happens. There's oh, yeah. like yeah. different, there's like the uh, IPP account, which is a uh, individual pension plan, yeah. I yeah, think, yeah. which is <laughs> kind of a rich person's RSP. Yeah, <laughs> basically, <laughs> but, Pretty much. So, so there's other variables that, that come into play. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but you know, all to say that passes a good approach, but, um, if you want to be an active manager, uh, when it comes to downturns like this, all to go back to, you know, taking things with a grain of salt with like performance too right. is really important and yeah. not getting too overconfident. And yeah, it's true. Uh, when times are good, because the last two years, like times were really good and yeah. it was really yeah. easy to, to do really well. Yeah. Um, but I think that's part of the value that I think that's oftentimes the value of an active manager. That's what I tell clients. That's part of, of my approach. And I think the value is one, like you said, it, it is, it, it's, you know, I don't think you can just say, well, I'm here to just pick your stocks and build your portfolio. That's it. Like, mm -hmm. you know, if you're dealing with people and you're dealing with their money, you're dealing with everything goes around with it. That's like the emotional side of it. Yeah. 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 But also, I mean, you tend to, if you're wealthier, if you're a business owner, whatever you have tax planning needs, estate planning needs. And so, you know, tend to deal with all of that because mm -hmm. it all kind of relates. Like it's really, it's more about, again, it's about the objective. Like, what are you trying to achieve? The investment itself is just kind of part of that path to achieve it um but yeah i kind of forget what else <laughs> where yeah, I was going no, with that. well just kind of talking generally about the i, I don't know like i said it's casual <laughs> yeah, yeah good 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 cut off a, a topic doesn't matter if i spend half an hour on one subject and then like 10 minutes on the on the downturn and i was all like that. i just want to make sure i'm not this isn't a sales pitch right <laughs> well, so one thing i was going to uh mention earlier too um it's kind of funny. So I, I got my role before having YouTube, having right. a YouTube channel. I started the YouTube channel working at this company. And one thing that I also really like about this company is they let me do this, yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is very rare in finance to, yeah. to have that free reign. And right. um, on top of that, one benefit is, you know, some people let you do it, but it has to be under their brand. Right. I've been very fortunate where I've kind of kept my, my plain bagel channel yeah, yeah. very separate, separate from the company. Yeah. It was actually kind of the first <laughs> integration yeah, yeah. of anything and um, in the sense of, you know, having a coworker on. Uh, but I, I think, so that's one reason I love working for the company. And, and I really value that because right. um, not to say that like a, co a message from a company is necessarily cheapens the, the lesson, but I right. think because of the distrust of the industry, yeah. like I think that's, you know, it's helpful to have like some independence, you right. know, and, and like we pride, like a pride point of the company is like having independent portfolio yeah. managers. Yeah. So it's kind of that same approach, Yeah. but very rare to have that. Like, I think so. and, and wouldn't have that, you know, if I worked for a bigger bank or a company, 
I would probably send my, whatever it's called, the external business activities form right, or whatever. For, yeah, I'd yeah, send yeah. that to the HR They'd say department. No, it would be, for sure. Yeah, it's just too much of a right compliance. Away. This, like, because it is a bit a of a, right? it is a bit of a compliance risk, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, we were talking about this at, uh, the other day when we were out and it's actually harder to do this kind of thing as an when actual registered, licensed yeah. registered professional because you you there's know more liability there's much stuff. more liability yeah. if you still have to act within your you know your obligation like you can't give advice like mm-hmm. you can't you know you could be in whereas like if you're just some random dude yeah not, in your basement like yeah. you can give you can say go do this go buy this and someone goes and loses a million yeah, yeah you can do that yeah. and if someone loses whatever it's not on you not on you whatever right yeah. so it's so one thing one thing i i put a video out uh, i don't know if i mentioned this to you but uh at least in the u.s i i'm and canada is very similar to the u.s in a lot right. of ways so i, I yeah. would assume it translates but i'm not 100 percent sure but there's basically this big exemption under their securities laws that basically says if you're a publisher of any sort uh, it hasn't actually been specified whether that applies to you two, huh. but could okay. likely be in, inferred right. that that uh, that applies. Um, if you're a publisher, you're basically excluded from any liability or, hmm. or requirement to give good financial advice because they basically say it's it's too, it's general enough. Oh, okay. uh, it's not specified towards a certain right. person. Yeah. Uh, which is kind of unfortunate. Like on the one hand, it's good in the sense that you know like people want to talk about stuff right. and you know, yeah. you want to be able to hear from a professional without paying them mm-hmm. um, that you can, you know, we can learn kind of stuff. On the other hand, you do have the side of it where people abuse right. that. Right. Oh, and, yeah. and you have uh, like, especially the last two years, like you saw a lot of people and I've always said, I, I, I don't want to gatekeep talking about investing. I think that'd be <laughs> stupid to come on here and be like, well, I'm, I'm an advisor. So, you know, just right. listen to me. What I think matters is, is being transparent about that yeah, and saying, so. saying that, you yeah, know, like, yeah. don't pretend like you have a yeah, lot of yeah. experience or accreditations <laughs> right. or whatever. Um, and also just like, don't give advice. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, just please stop. Stop telling people what to buy. Like, yeah, that's I know. the worst thing I've seen over the last two yeah. years is like, like Bitcoin's really bad, obviously, like oh, the people yeah. who are crazy about putting all your money into Bitcoin, but even just like, you know, the tech stocks that are now down like 70%, like yeah. 80, 90% at times, like, and there's no, that's the unfortunate side is there's no consequence to doing that. Right. And there's none. So, uh, you know, not to, uh, it's not to, you know, cl- claim that I'm, you know, better than thou and, or holier than thou and <laughs> all that stuff. That's because I, I think that's kind of brutal to take that approach right. too, but yeah. it's just like, I don't I know. I mean, don't take, don't take stock picks from YouTube. That's, well, <laughs> that's like. Cause I think <laughs> the reason why we can't, you know, as licensed professionals give advice on YouTube or we can't be like, okay, you should buy this or do this or buy this because that sh- kind of advice shouldn't be given broadly, direct, broadly. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Because it depends so much on, on your, your risk tolerance, yeah. on your situation, on your ability, your, you know, your capacity to take risk, your need, you know, all that yeah. kind of stuff, right? And so if you're out there saying, well, you should do, because there's just no one size fits all anything yeah. in this world. So, you know, like that's, that's why we can't. So that's why yeah. you should, you know, yeah. hey, if you're curious about a company or you're curious about something, or you want to learn about something and you can find kind of a video on it or, you know, to learn yeah, more and then make your own independent even like, research. It's and, great. And yeah, I like, think YouTube's good for yeah. people playing out research and, and, you know, you have to be yeah. careful when you but get yeah, there, yeah. but you know, because it, like, you don't want to censor people. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's yeah. just, it's, you know, the, the broad stuff, because yeah. like you're saying, like even just the idea of investing in like the stock market, like even, yeah. if, even if you just take like saying, putting your money into a S and P 500 ETF, right. which is a pretty vanilla thing yeah, to suggest. It, like, but there are like people who that's yeah. not applicable for that's because right. yeah. that money is needed in well, six that, months. And that's kind of what whatever, I was right? try, saying before too. Like you can be, you can use passive investments, but I still think you should always be an active investor. Meaning, the, yeah, you know, there's a financial planning aspect. You know, there's a financial it, yeah. planning or even just simple, like ask, okay, should I do passive investments? Great. Well, which ones should I, you know, how much in US, how much in Canada, how much internationally, yeah. how much in whatever. You can do all that passively but the active decision should be, you know, based on my risk tolerance, based on my objectives. And that's where I think robo advisors do a pretty good job, right? right They're yeah, still, yeah. you know, they use algorithms or use whatever to kind of match passive investments to your, right. you know, but I, so I don't think that's why I don't think you need to be totally passive and just be like, well, I'm just going to buy this. Right. It's yeah, passive. Yeah. No, you still need to make some decisions. Right. Uh, you can do that 
through robo advisors or do that through i mean there's so many good you can pick blogs ETFs there are whatever. good yeah, yeah. blogs and good yeah. you know kind of stuff out there that you can like there's tons of good resources but i think probably now it's more challenging ever i don't know the space probably as well as you do as far as i try to ignore a lot of the crap that's out there surprisingly <laughs> i do too but it's, it's harder when it you're finds a YouTuber, you right? it yeah. finds you yeah 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 you know youtube in this kind of area has started as like a, a counter movement to to wall street and right. Uh, in protest of of the high fees and stuff, and f- rightly yeah, so, you know, absolutely. there's a lot yeah. of problems in that space. Um, some spaces have kind of adopted the same problems, right? right? Like yeah. selling stuff and and yeah. all this conflicts of interest and stuff. I it's think not now, everyone, but... I think now is a good time to introduce our course that we're publishing. That we're <laughs> yeah. Gonna... <laughs> so, so moving on to the next topic is plain so bagels. For, uh, how much do we charge in monthly? Yeah, uh, I don't know, Eight hundred. Does that sound yeah, right? Sounds, sounds good. good. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. We're kind of uh, running long on time, but that's okay. Uh, but before I, I let you go home and yeah, have supper, you'll stuff. have to have me on again because I talk a lot. Yeah, well, no, it's <laughs> like this is like what the office is like sometimes. Yeah, it's, it is. I know. We'll, we'll we show just hit them chat for just a while. Chat. I know. Um, but uh, for anyone who's watching, kind of, I, I like to ask people kind of final tips they have for people. But I figured, given what we were talking about earlier, uh, two tips uh, if you could leave people with one. Uh, for anyone who's looking to start investing at a time like this, um, what I guess I would say, like, what would you say is like the first step for someone who's like, you know, may, whether it be, oh, the markets are down, I really want to get in or someone who's like, well, I know I need to invest, but I'm not sure if now's a good time. And then the other one being give, we kind of talked about it earlier, but you work as a portfolio manager for someone who might be interested eventually, because you're probably it's right. It would be near impossible to hop into that role straight out of university right, or something. Right what's kind of like a similar thing, a first step for moving towards right. a PM style position. Right. So first question, you know, what kind of advice I'd have, I'd say that know why you're investing or what you're trying to achieve. Right. Number one, right. Mm-hmm. Cause it's, we often get into the, um, I don't know, the sexiness of the individual investment. Right. And <laughs> what am I, you know, really in the end, it's like, what am I trying to achieve it? If it is just trying to make some money, well, you know just buying sexy thing. investments that's yeah, just buy sexy investments. <laughs> yeah. that's great key. done yeah. uh, and call me at this number for uh <laughs> for advice <laughs> for the course in, <laughs> yeah buying sexy investments yeah but i mean yeah i think really it's just kind of you know understanding and then you need to understand your own risk tolerance because yeah. you know if you're going to start investing and like you say you invest right now mm-hmm. it could go really well you know, things could turn around, things could go, maybe we don't hit a recession, who knows, maybe stagflation doesn't materialize and things could go up and great. But I mean, we could be in for, you know, some more pain ahead, pain or, ahead yeah, you yeah. know, and, and maybe more likely that we are, who knows. Um, but you have to be kind of honest and prepared. So I think, you know, know your time frame is mm-hmm. super important. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, so I, I think, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if that really answers you. Yeah, what no, what that, would you say? Like, like what would yeah, you, you know? I, I think that's a, well, I always say like, don't put the cart before the horse right. in the sense of, you know, uh, not only educating yourself about investments before right. hopping into it, you know, you can always put, and you can learn as you go. Like you're not going to, you know, take a crash course for four years right. and then start yeah. investing. Yeah. Like you can always put money into a, a yeah. fund of some sort and, yeah. uh, learn as you go. But certainly before you start stock picking right uh or at the very least like putting your life savings on right. the line like because yeah. you know you can have play money or whatever yeah uh it's budgeting you know the, right. the f- managing your money so that you aren't making gains over here but also spent well, like losing money over here uh, you right? and i've had that chat before i yeah, think yeah. right and 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 i actually wrote an article years ago in a magazine and it was kind of discussing about that how like and it was really it actually had to do with the passive versus active oh right yeah, yeah. argument right yeah, and debate, that, you yeah. know that the war that rages on between the two yeah, yeah. and the point my point was like in the end that's not really what matters like you know whether one personnel performs by half a percent or whatever in the end it's like the financial decisions you make <laughs> play a much bigger role play a yeah, way yeah. bigger yeah, yeah. role in your success so and there are like, a lot of studies that show that like, like absolutely yeah. right and it's more like you know it's like oh who cares if you you know, unless you're in, I mean, ex, there's always extreme examples. Yeah, like if, like you, if you do, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, there's some 17 year old and yeah. In who's, who's yeah. Like, whatever, Derek. Yeah. Whatever. You, yeah. Yeah. For the rest of us average people <laughs> yeah, who just, yeah. who just want to live a good life and, yeah, yeah. you know, get ahead. Um, yeah, sure. I mean, uh, yeah, there are those people that, <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's you, know. Someone, you know what? <laughs> Sorry, not to detract <laughs> so far, and and this maybe this will undermine all the responsible stuff I've been saying. But I was at a car dealership, and they were saying that like an eight, uh, 
16 year old came in and bought in a sports car using like cryptocurrency money wow yeah and i was like great I mean, it happens right <laughs> it does it happen. does yeah, it yeah. does it does yeah. I, I, you know what um you know we were chatting too and you're asking like i still I, I do have clients ask about bitcoin and stuff yeah, yeah. or the fads like we chatted i know a couple years ago about the it was marijuana stocks before yeah, that, that right one yeah in canada and, anyway, in canada yeah. anyway right and so it was like yeah i do get that and and the first thing i'm very careful i never say like it's a bad idea or you can't make money or you're going to lose money because you know, there's lots of people that have made a lot of money with that kind of stuff, that kind of stuff. Yeah. But if you're looking, you know, what I do and what we do is we help people invest for the long term. Mm. That's not investing for the long term. In my view, in my opinion, I might get some nasty comments. I know there's lots of, it's (laughs) a very, (laughs) yeah. Well, weed stock investors might agree now. Yeah. 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 I know. Exactly. So it's like, it's different, right? You could get very lucky, mm-hmm. you know, and some might say it's not luck and, but you have to have kind of the fortitude and understand what it is and what it is, is it speculating, you know, mm-hmm. and it's a very speculative asset. That's not the same as investing for the long term in a business, and, that, in a business yeah, yeah. that, you know, and so they're two very different. So I'm very clear with clients like, or, you know, actually, and I get more questions from friends and family and stuff right. who know what I do for a living. Oh, well, you know, and I had a guy working on my basement, do my drywall being like, what do you think of Bitcoin? And you know, the answer is always, well, it depends. Like, what do yeah. you, you know, what are you trying you to do with for, it? Like, yeah. if, are you trying for a lottery ticket or something? Yeah. Like if you have a little bit to speculate, well, maybe, I don't know. Like right. it, it all depends what you're trying to do. Um, but yeah, so, so I guess, yeah, yeah, I think it's good advice and I think start small, start slow. And, and I also think that if you have kind of a penchant for like, if you really, you kind of want to learn, I think, I think maybe being a bit risky with the money that you can be risky can with. be risky yeah, yeah i can afford <laughs> right? yeah, yeah so if It'll you have like you, yeah. you know if you have a group rsp or like a pension at work and you're and you're saving you know maybe that's the money that's over here and it's my you know but if i have some money and i want to learn i want to because you might learn by losing, losing big or you yeah, might yeah. lose the word you know learn by winning big yeah. and i think that's okay yeah, yeah nothing totally. wrong with that so i think but yeah, just but again for, you have to know yourself and your objectives and your risk tolerance and your like risk you tolerance saying, and yeah, like stuff, how much but, you can afford and, yeah. and that's the thing is like you know i think a lot of people will be like well okay i'll put 50 percent of my money into this pension 50 percent into speculative it's like well, well you know, yeah. maybe yeah maybe dial it down think about bit, what but. you're trying you know what's more important to you getting yeah, yeah. rich now or retiring you know yeah. what's higher probability like and it's different yeah. for everybody we don't know you know you don't know everything so i think yeah yeah. And uh, any tip for someone who wants to be a PM one day? Yeah, I mean, I think you had a good one too. Is I think don't wait necessarily till you you get the work experience to start trying to get some experience. Um, I mean, education obviously important. Anything you can do to set yourself ahead, I do think, and I think we're both very big proponents on you know the CFA mm-hmm. charter. And I'd also think about okay, am I do I want to be kind of a purely an investment guy? Uh, you know, then maybe the CF, CFA is purely what I want. Or am I wanting to be the investment guy, but also be a bit more holistic with my clients and wealth management, maybe start looking at the CFP, right? Yeah. you know, which, which is we another both good, have, good designation, which is another for... designation, it's another global designation. And it's more covers everything. Yeah. Like it covers tax, everything. Yeah. State tax to an insurance. extent, like to a, you're yeah, not a yeah, tax yeah. expert, yeah. you're but, a generalist, but generalist, you can, yeah. yeah. And so, um, you know, I think education is important and I think, yeah. And I think, um, something I say to a lot of students and, and stuff that I'm talking to, or when, if I'm ever mentoring, it's more like, and yeah, you know, like any experience is good experience and, um, it can be, it is competitive. And just because you're not in the role you want to be right now, doesn't mean it doesn't kind of set you up right to get to that role. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, and everybody can kind of have a different path, path to where they're like, you and I have had very different paths right. to yeah, get yeah. to where we are. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, and that's just what, the way it worked. So I'd say, yeah, I, I don't know. Cool. Okay. Well, thank you, Derek, for taking the time yeah, yeah. And, and chatting. That was a lot of fun. It, was, yeah. it worked out well, and I uh, appreciate you being the second in-person podcast guest. Yeah, uh, yeah. honorable title. Take that. <laughs> Simply neological. <laughs> hey, I was on there twice. <laughs> no, well, <laughs> um, well, if uh, if you guys enjoyed, uh, we've talked about doing more than one episode at yeah. some point because... Yeah. Uh, uh, lo and behold it's it's t- content's tough sometimes and, and derek's uh <laughs> and i'm free so. <laughs> well, that's, yeah that's true uh wealth and knowledge though and and uh so if you guys enjoyed 
Uh, Derek, let me know in the comments down below. And if you didn't like him, then leave just a bunch of mean comments and I'll get the message and pass them all <laughs> yeah, to Derek. No way. I'm, I'm super... Derek was specifically like, can you make sure they're like yeah, not like... I'm super... I'm, <laughs> so mean. I'm an extremely sensitive guy. So all nice comments. Only, only nice comments. <laughs> just passive aggressive comments if you yeah, didn't yeah. like Derek. Thank you guys for joining us. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for watching, having me. Uh, on YouTube, podcast or whatever. And uh, yeah, uh, we'll see you in the next one. Till then, have a good one. Cheers. Bye-bye. The final thank you to Morning Brew for sponsoring this episode and your final reminder to use the link in the description below to check them out, support them, and support the channel. Thanks.